Hello everybody, welcome to Learning Factory. Normally, I wouldn't make a video like this for this channel, but I'm making an exception for this game because whenever I got it, I was just so enamored with the concepts behind it and the art style that it's showing off that I just couldn't help but want to share it. That, then I also think that YouTube is demanding that I make more videos if uh, my channel is to ever get recommended again, so here we are. I've made a few videos on Factorio and Factorio-like games in the past, so you're probably already aware that I enjoy games like this. This is an automation and resource management and logistics game at its core. But instead of just building for building's sake, you're building things and creating things to sell them to the cats of the universe. Instead of building boring old circuit boards and iron bars and crap like that, you get to make fish bowls, balls of yarn, cat houses. Just the idea of building a commerce empire for cat kind has sunk its hooks in me and is not letting go. All I want to do is make all these little cats happy. <laughs> Look at them. The premise behind this game is relatively simple. Whenever you start a game for the first time, you're shown a little bit of a comic strip where a man and his cat are just having a good time together, but the cat wants something and the man doesn't understand what the cat wants. So naturally, like any person would do, he goes way too far in trying to figure out what the cat wants by doing research and writing research papers and opening up a whole factory for the sole purpose of finding out what cats want. The cat brain is very complex, so naturally, the only course of action is to employ sophisticated algorithms and machine learning and science to gather as much data as humanly possible from selling and bartering with all the cats that come to your stores. Cats come in through this little cat gateway and they come into your stores and they ask for specific items. If you have those items in your stock, you can offer them at a price and if the cat has enough money and is willing to pay that price, then the cat will pay that money over to you and you'll be a little bit richer for it. Whether or not the sale was successful, it doesn't really matter as far as the machine learning and data collection part of the game goes. When you first start, all you have is this dinky little one cent store. Everything that you ever sell to these cats is sold at a penny. Eventually, you research the ability to set the price manually and then you can, you know, try to barter based on what you're observing, but you're trying to build out your factory so you eventually research a smart shop and then you connect to that smart shop to a linear regression algorithm machine which takes all the data from the shop bartering with the cats and tries to set the best price for each specific type of cat. So the normie cats coming in might have a little more money than the bag cats, so they might be charged a little bit extra. It's like a cat simulated version of our own Amazon because newsflash Amazon does fix prices based on where you live, who you are and your purchase history. It's kind of jank, kind of sucks, but there it is. That's the harsh realities of things. You might think that having a machine do everything for you is, you know, probably a little bit too easy. But you have to remember, you're still trying to maintain your factory, expand production, and make everything as efficient as you possibly can so you can earn as much money as possible and gather as much data as possible so you can progress through the tech tree and build ever more complicated structures and eventually unlock the key to the feline brain. You know, the usual things. But there is another wrinkle in the plans here because each shop can only hold four types of inventory. So inevitably what you're gonna need to do is you're going to need to funnel each type of cat into different stores based on what you have learned that they want. For example, I figured out at one point that these worker cats, they don't want what the other cats want. These worker cats are busy little beavers, so what they want is raw materials. So I set up a shop specifically filled with raw materials and I funneled my worker cats directly to that. And then eventually these high and mighty elite cats started coming in and what they wanted was nice pillows, high quality cat food, carefully constructed cat houses. Naturally, I hook up each of these shops to their algorithm machines and I just let them go and set the prices for me while I 
just work my butt off trying to build up my little factory, my little space of the world to gather all the materials needed to build something as complicated as cat trees and pillows and cat food. If you've played Factorio or any of these logistics management games, then you understand how this goes, more or less. But other than the fact that you're wading hand and foot on cats and trying to unlock their psyche, there are a few things that set this apart that have kept me hooked. Now you might remember the tunnel conveyor from games like Factorio or Mendistry that lets you go underneath other structures and other conveyor belts in a straight line so you can have even more complex factories than you would be able to have otherwise. This allows you to have a level of crisscrossing between your supply lines that you're probably going to want. However, in Learning Factory, you still have those tunnel conveyors, but instead of just going in a straight line and exiting on the other side, there is a whole sub-layer of the world that can house nothing but conveyors. So you can send a pile of materials straight to the underground, have it snake around for 16 miles, and then come all the way back up to the surface back to its destination. It changes up the building and planning aspect just enough to keep things really interesting and dare I say, fun? It definitely requires an extra level of thinking because instead of just going underneath buildings and conveyor belts, you have this whole secondary layer to plan around and you can't go underneath other things inside that second layer. There's no third layer that you can tunnel into to keep making your supply lines as complex as you possibly can. Now you have to work around the spaghetti mess that you've made underground. Luckily, the underground is completely free of obstructions, so you're pretty free to do whatever you want, as long as you have the materials to build all the transports and stuff. Another thing that I think sets this game apart is the fact that it's really interested in teaching you the concepts that it's using in its game's world. There's a wiki built into the game that teaches you not only what each structure is used for inside the game, but there's also a couple of paragraphs for each and every building that currently exists that tells you its real world applications and how it applies to data science and machine learning in real life. So not only are you learning how to build a factory better and learning the mechanics of this particular game, but you're also hopefully going to learn about important real world topics that relate to actual data science. This game was made by the same developer as a game called Wild True Learn, which has a very different style of gameplay, but it also has that same trying to teach you methodology behind it. It's not just a good game on its own, it's a good learning tool. This game just came out into early access a few days ago, and after about six hours, I've pretty much completed all of the content that this game has to offer. But if you're interested in literally anything that I've mentioned in this video, put it on your wish list. Watch the game, watch it develop. The developer has a proven track record of making games that people like and finishing them. So take a look at it, watch it develop, and if it gets to a point that you think you might enjoy it, maybe even buy it. On this day of February 20th, 2021, which is when I am speaking right now, I cannot quite recommend it at the $15 price tag because I, like I said, I finished it in about six hours. And if you've seen any of my past Factorio videos, you might be aware that I'm not the greatest at these games and the greatest at planning a factory. So that probably is saying something, but I do not doubt that one day this game will definitely be worth it. So please keep your eye on it. On top of that, the developers gave me my very own personal customized overseer cat that watches over my factory. I can see him every time I go into the pause menu. He's this little hairless thing with glasses and a beard. Look at him. It's me in the game, guys. Yeah, so I might be a little bit biased because of that. Regardless though, I do think this game is pretty cool and I'm looking forward to seeing it develop. Once again, I apologize for the relative simplicity in the editing and the content of this video. I promise I'm working on some more high effort things that are coming down the pipeline, so look forward to those. As always, thanks a lot to my channel members for supporting me, especially DanielBR93, who is currently sitting all alone at the struggling comedian tier. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye bye <laughs>